Thursday, partly sunny, a good chance of an afternoon thunderstorm high 90 to 94. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Thank you, Joe Lundberg. Four minutes after 8 o'clock, almost five minutes actually after, um, real quickly, all 12 boys and the coach have been rescued from that cave in Thailand. How about that? All 12 chills. boys and the coach. The, the unfortunate part of this story is one of the uh, Navy SEAL uh, divers died um, in the course of trying to rescue these uh, 13 people. However, um, the 13 people that were originally trapped are now out. And uh, there will be a, a soccer game, I think, that will probably get more viewership than the yeah, Super Bowl. For sure. And these kids play again, I think. Um, Galen Unold is on the phone from Life South Community Blood Center. Good morning, Galen. Hey, good morning, Larry Robin. How are you all? Good. You know, the, you know the sad part of that whole story is that there are apparently multiple Hollywood reporters or Hollywood producers there ready to make the movie. I bet. About this tragedy. And, and, and I mean, I guess their story should be told, but I think it's already been told. You got just a bunch of people trying to capitalize on these people's pain. Uh, it, it's, you know. Yes, I'm sure that's exactly true. Um, however, from the, the movie goer's point of view, if it's a if it's a skillful movie maker, and let's hope somebody who is skilled and, and tasteful does it, then you'll see some inside stories that you don't know. You know, you'll see what. Yeah, was, but how yeah. often? How often are these kinds of tragedies? And granted, thankfully, none of the kids died, but the, the seal, you know, obviously gave his life for these kids. But how often are they well done? It's pretty hard. Right. To, I mean, to make it well done, well done without, you know, hollow, I mean, it you is, know, a little more Hollywood. Uh, and, yeah. You know, how, there's no explosion. So, uh, yeah, I, well, I, I don't know. It, it's rare. It's rare. But I mean, it has been done. I would I would I would maybe say that Schindler's List was an example of a horrible thing that happened that was treated well. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I think Spielberg knew how to handle that particular yeah. story, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and it was about an individual within a a, a bigger issue. Right. So, right. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I mean, I guess. No. You know, I, I, I just think about it because they, they made a movie like about the MGM fire where my aunt and uncle died. And, oh. you know, it was just brutal. And, and so, and I know from that standpoint what it can do to a family. And, you know, they tried it with the Boston Marathon. They tried it with bombing and they've tried it with 9 11. Mm. And, there's just been some really bad, exploitive, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. movies that are made, and, and and I just find it disgusting that there are Hollywood producers on the scene, you know, getting these kids and their families who, you know, probably make, you know, a third of what a, a U.S. family right, makes, right, and, right, and, right. and they're getting exploited to sign away right, their right. their life rights. So, to, uh, comment on my my statement that when these kids finally get back on the playing field, the whole world is going to be watching. What do you think? I think they'll be done with it. I, I mean, the whole world. I don't know. Really? I, mean, I think the U.S. No, will be I done with so. it. I think. No, I think we'll be done with it. They're not going to play anytime soon. Um, I, I mean, it'll be a news story, but I don't think people will, people will watch them. Well, I, I think what they should will. We do? We should, should we I bet? Think they will. Yeah, we'll, let's we bet. We should wager, I let's think, bet. with Galen. Okay. I think we should wager. Well, yeah, I mean, I, we, we have to figure out how we're going to value it and how we're going to judge whether or not the world watches it. <laughs> is it going to be on CNN? I mean, is it going to be on ABC? <laughs> are, are they going to break in the... No, exactly. No, we have to work out... The red or we, whatever? We have to work out the details, but I think we should go to an expert. Let me get my friend over in uh, Vegas on the phone. Hold on. <laughs> 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 I, wish could, I wish I could do that. Wouldn't that be cool? Just call, be cool. call somebody we know. Yeah. I don't know anybody. I, I, I mean, more than a Super Bowl? No way. No <laughs> way. No way. Okay. Well, that, so there is a measurable thing then. So you can measure how many people watch the Super Bowl. We would be able to sure. measure how many people are watching this game. Exactly. Hmm. Exactly. Yeah, in the world. Hmm. In, in the, the world. world. In the yeah. world. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Hey, today the topic is not that. The topic is, and this is so cool, inventions that came from the military. That's pretty amazing. Oh, yeah. Do any come to mind right off uh, the bat? Uh, you mean outside of, like, warfare? And, yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah, outside of warfare. Like outside, um, outside of warfare. Well, although... although well, and, and when you say military, do you mean, like, uh, defense contractors? Or yeah. do you mean... 
in the an actual, effort, like U.S. Army, in an effort to defend ourselves, we have the military, and it could be the army, the navy, it mm-hmm. could be any of them. But in an effort, in an right. effort to defend ourselves, certain things were invented. Mm-hmm. Um, sure. That that somebody said, hey, you know what? We could probably sell this to the average Joe, average citizen. So probably the the, the, the probably the one that impacts us every day is GPS. Yes, I think GPS is probably <laughs> that is, yes. the biggest. And I mean, then you have like radar, and you know, obviously camouflage, which everybody wears now. It's just part of the thing. I mean, there's a lot of things like that. Yes, you named two. It, uh, to throw the right, right, yeah. Well, and the, uh, because if you think about in Florida, there would not be this. You know, our our ability to forecast uh, whether it's weather or right, hurricane, right. tornado, yes. or any of that without the military. Absolutely. So, yes. Yeah. So you named two. The 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 third one you named is absolutely should be on the list, but it's not. It's mm-hmm. it's the uh, the camouflage, but mm-hmm. that should be that's right. That should be. The list. <laughs> <laughs> How about the oxygen mask that dropped down on commercial airlines because they they had those in the military for that the fighter sense. jets yes. and stuff. That probably for should the be pilots, on the list too. Yeah, you know, they had that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's yeah. not on the list either, but it should be. Yeah, I have things that are on the list, and I just wondered how many we could come up with. I know what's on the list, so I will be cheating if I tell you anything at all. But yeah, but did you yeah. come up with something I, that wasn't I, on the list? The one thing I oh gosh, the one thing I had was um, oh my gosh, I can't remember what it was now. But there was one thing. Mm-hmm. I, I, I was listening to a podcast and I thought, wait a minute, wasn't that a mili- military use? Now I can't even remember what it was. But, oh okay. Uh, oh, I know what it was. It was uh, uh, don't tell me. Uh, oh gosh, what's artificial rubber? Don't worry, I, I won't tell you. Uh, I, I don't ar- know what uh, artificial, artificial rubber. What's artificial rubber uh, called? Plastic. <laughs> not, not nylon although i think nylon was also invented by the military um bandex uh, artificial rubber yeah vinyl vinyl was vinyl. Thinking okay. yes vinyl okay. was oh. invented by the military yes oh okay yeah I, nice. don't ask me how i know that i just remember that years ago vinyl mm-hmm like naga naga hide or whatever it was all yeah. it was all part of that whole experiment uh-huh. to try to sure. create an artificial rubber oh okay well, in- like on the medical, queen. on the medical side, um, you know, there's been millions of lives saved because of what doctors learn on the battlefield. Yeah, yeah. You know, going all the way back to the the Revolutionary War, and if you go even further than that, the Roman army with Doctor Galen, of course, a long lost ancestor. There you go. Mm-hmm. That's exactly right. That's right. Yes. Um, he he was he, he you know he he advanced medical science dramatically, and that's part of the reason why the Roman empire was so strong was because their military was healthier than the people they were fighting now when when was he around um the, the dr oh, galen like bc right it was like no not bc i mean uh yeah right around bc I oh think. wow so a long time ago um yeah well the the military is being credited with blood banks actually and and tra- yeah. transfusions a- absolutely world war ii the, rubber bands they trace it to world war one um oh. And it was they, they trace it to uh, Lieutenant Lawrence Bruce Robertson, by the way, who was a Canadian, just so you know. He did drive slower than you. <laughs> oh, yeah. He, he was, they, they credit him with being the first to push for the adoption of blood transfusion techniques to help save the wounded. Um, the very first blood transfusions had to be made from person to person due to issues with coagulation, which you've told us this several times, many times. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, medical advances soon saw the techniques move into the civilian world. Where well, there you go. So that's completely directly well, relating to what you do for a living. Kind of it, blood donations, because back then there wasn't a there wasn't a middleman, right? If you think about it, I'm the middleman. Mm-hmm. So right. when you say blood uh, blood transfusions, yeah, were used and they they weren't all that effective. But but Dr. Charles Drew, who was working at the American Red Cross and was funded by the military, that's pretty much why the Red Cross is funded by the government, um, started what we call blood banking. So where that you could store the unit, have it preset for originally for military operation, and then it became a civilian use. It's very, it's interesting, isn't it, though? It's very so some, interesting. So, you know, uh, something we create for one purpose ends up giving us something else. Like, we've, we've talked about what the space program gave us several times. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in a way, the space program is also an invention of, of the military, if you think about it, right? Right. 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 Sure is. Oh, well, every, every 
astronaut was a was a, a, a right, pilot right, right. in the military. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So before we take before we go another step into this topic, how is the blood supply today? Um, again, we're still hurting. We're right there to a little over a two-day blood supply. So we had a little bit of a peak yesterday, but we just need more. Here we are. We're in the middle of the summer. The weather is perfect the way it's supposed to be. Rains in the afternoon, but we just need people to get out there, get to get the wife to donate blood. Yeah. Please, please, please donate blood. Yeah, donate blood, and uh, it's easy to do. Okay. Yeah, it is. Take it from a guy who was afraid to do it until he was in his 40s. The older I get, the prouder I am about giving blood. Uh uh, Seriously, when we first started doing this, I I felt like I only did it for a short while when we first started talking to you, Galen. Now I can say decades. I've done it for decades. Because you're a Galenier and stuff. You got your Galenier certificate from Lifestyle. I got that a long long time ago. ago. Yeah, so I must be more than a gallon right now. A long time ago. So anyway, yeah, donate blood. Thank you, Pen Flooring and uh, Palm Garden of uh, Vocala. Uh, those two businesses make it possible for Galen to do this d- on a daily basis. Uh, Pen Flooring has some beautiful carpeting and wood flooring and vinyl, which was invented by the military. Uh, <laughs> they're at 1201 Southwest 17th Street. Uh, go see them and say hi. Tell them thank you for sponsoring the segment we do with Life South with Galen Unold. And uh, then uh, go home and make your home more beautiful from the floor up. Go to Palm Garden of Ocala. Take a tour, and you'll see why people are choosing Palm Garden for their health and rehabilitative needs, whether it's for their a loved one or for themselves. Um, take a look at their whole offering, uh, whether it's long-term, short-term, respite. Um, every All the people who stay there, regardless of how long they will be there, will be treated uh, with with kindness and just uh, treated to beautiful, delicious food and mm-hmm. have, a, have a beautiful place to live. So there you go. Go to Palm Garden. It's a skilled nursing facility. They're at 12, I'm sorry, 2700 Southwest 34th Street. So Nice. All right. Other things that we got as inventions that came from the military. The microwave oven. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. Wow. During World War II, a guy by the name of Percy Spencer was working on new radar technology when he noticed that the candy bar in his pocket was melting. (laughs) He said, now why is that melting? He realized he was microwaving his own chest. Oh, wow. He did. Microwave ovens were developed afterwards. Isn't that amazing? Wow, that's amazing. Gosh. (laughs) I'm glad he didn't have a hamster in his pocket. Yeah, that wouldn't have been good. It's a matter of hamster. It would have imploded. Jet engines, of course. Well, that's that's kind of a no-brainer. Yeah. They were invented mm-hmm. by the military. Yeah. Well, they were invented for the military, even though it was a private company. But it, it, it so it's a, it was a DOD contract. So it, yeah, but it was for the military, obviously. Yes. Uh, Germany introduced the first operational jet in 1943. Yeah. Wow. I don't, yeah. I don't know who uh, invented it specifically, but that's where they they were the first. My father has a story, had a story, when he was alive, yeah. of seeing the jet go over. That was an amazing story. <clears throat> and they story. told him, they told him, oh, you got battle fatigue. There's no such thing. Yeah. Yeah, that was an amazing story. I think I have that story on tape somewhere of him. I that. think so, too. All right. Aviator sunglasses were invented by the military. It's not just a sales phrase. They didn't create those two words, aviator sunglasses, to sell eyeglasses or sunglasses. Did you, did you know that? <laughs> Yes, that part. I, I, I didn't know the. Uh, I didn't know the military invented them. Uh, I didn't know that. Uh, the lenses were much larger than what was seen on traditional sunglasses at the time, in order to protect the entire range of view. Because the glasses proved to be so effective, they were then marketed towards outdoorsmen. How about mm-hmm. that? So that's that's the the the, the mark of a uh, aviator glasses. They're bigger, huh? More, yeah. More su- surface. Yep. Duct Tom tape. Cruise looks good in them. Galen, duct tape was invented by the military. I I did I did know that I I did know that just because they needed an all-purpose tape. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I wonder who they got to test that out. <laughs> you everything. Rip that hair off of your arm, boy. Yeah, it works. <laughs> oh no, that's yeah. It's, it's but I mean, it's a very useful thing out in the middle of nowhere. You can tape something up or. Yeah, you can do anything with duct tape. I love it. Right. Until about 100 years ago, shaving required a trip to the barber or using a straight razor, and that blade needed to be sharpened frequently. The military invented the disposable razor in World War I. Really? How about that? Really? 
Wow. Well, and you got to remember why, right? It, because the genesis, I always think, is amazing. Because if you, if the reason the military has to be clean shaven is because of the threat of gas, right? And, and in World War One, we all know that gas was used. And if you have hair on your beard or on your face, your gas mask will not adhere to your skin correctly. I didn't know that. So I, I didn't know that either. That's why you have to be shaved. So wow. it's a gas mask. Right. Yeah. And, and uh, about, I mean, if you have a beard, it's going to create air pockets. And that's the last thing you want to do. And women's legs? What's going on there? Well, typically, you know, you don't need it. I mean, <laughs> there, women weren't in World War One <laughs> on the front line. So. You men like the softness and the smoothness. <laughs> Here, honey, let, let me loan you my that, razor. That's why they, yeah, that's why they have their own razors. <laughs> you never want to use a razor after your wife uses it. That's a well-documented oh. fact. <laughs> All right. As modern programmable computers were becoming popular after World War II, the United States military wanted to be able to link machines together in a reliable network. They formed one. In 1969, they called it ARPANET, and it allowed for the transmission of information from one computer to another. The that is amazing. The system was refined over yeah. the next 20 years until finally Tim Berners-Lee of CERN, C-E-R-N, wrote the code that brought the World Wide Web to life in 1989. Wow. And Al Gore, I mean, was a huge factor in that. We all know that. Missing, of missing yeah, yeah, missing of from course. the story. He's a huge factor because his name is missing from that story. Exactly. <laughs> Al sure. Gore did not invent how, how unfortunate. You know, we talk about misquoting fake news. I mean, you know, he didn't really say that. He just says the senator would be... Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, but it's still no, we have, a good we, story. We have a crazy, crazy uh, world that we live in. Yeah. Uh, I already, I already mentioned um, latex. Um, mm -hmm. So there you go. Synthetic rubber. Super glue was invented in. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Latex is different than vinyl. V latex and vinyl. Yeah, this is. Well, no, one leads All to right. the other. Right, that's true, but they're they're different compounds. Yeah. So, I only know that because the, we have rubber. Oh, gloves, right, for the gloves. gloves and yeah, then we yeah, have yeah. latex gloves. Yeah. yeah. Uh, super glue was invented uh, during yep. World War II. Yep. Wow, didn't know that. Uh -huh. It was used as a skin, as to, to you know, cut, cover like wounds and stuff. That's what it was used for, but it was invented to make plastic gun sights. Oh. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. Did not know that. Uh, it turned out that it was not practical for that purpose, and uh, they found out that it, it, it adhered very quickly and was used, as Galen said, to uh, heal or, or close wounds. Mm-hmm. Ones, yeah. And that's what they do now. You can buy that in the in the store as a wound bandage or something, right? I think so. Uh, I think I've seen that, yeah. 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 <laughs> Canned food goes back to the eighteen hundreds. It was invented. Yep. Back then by the military. How about that? Yeah, imagine Jim packing a bunch of mason jars and, and hacking and hiking with <laughs> yeah, that. Really? You know? oh. <laughs> really. Ah, here's here's one. Uh Je the jerry can. Now, have you ever what heard of it? What is that? Okay, I hadn't heard of it either. Do you sure. know what a jerry can is? Oh, really? Sure. What is it? It either holds water or it holds gas. I mean, it's just a, it's a gas, we, you would call it just a gasoline can. Yeah, it's a, it's a, oh. it's a can with a spout. Oh, okay. So it is, is a can with a spout. It was, okay. it was invented by the military so they could bring um, fuel onto the battlefield. Oh, okay. Or, or, or water, because, uh, you know, you, you sometimes need water, and so jerry cans can be used as a water or uh, or gas. Well, did they invent canteens then? Yeah. Can canteens? canteens I the would think so. That would make sense, right? Then? Yeah. yeah. But, I, I mean, I, I'm sure they are. Well, in a lot of those water storing devices, like <clears throat> camelbacks, you know, where you have the water stored in your backpack, mm -hmm. that's a, that, that was a military invention. Uh, the EpiPen. Was invented by the military. Yeah. The auto injecting syringe that allows you to give yourself a quick shot of epi, epi, epinephrine? How do you say that? Again? Epinephrine. Thank you. Ep epinephrine. Thank you. For allergic reactions, right? Oh, oh my. Um, wristwatches were invented by the military. How about really? that? Really? How about that? Yeah. 
Oh, yeah, because but- and the only reason I know that is when you go in the military and the navy, the only piece of jewelry you're allowed to wear was a watch. So that was it. Oh, okay. We're allowed to wear a watch. It doesn't give details, though. I, I thought wristwatches were around. Well, pocket watches were around, like George pocket Washington's Pocket watches time. were around. Oh, okay, wrist okay, watches. gotcha. But then gotcha. they made it into a wristwatch. Gotcha. All right. Uh, so if you think about it, in the military, time is everything, right? I mean, that's how you're coordinating your attacks. You know, the whole mark your watches in yeah. the military term. Yeah. Uh, walkie-talkies were invented by the military. Started in World War II. Sure. Walkie talkies, little little radios. Mm-hmm. Did the military invent the compass too? No, I don't think oh, so. Okay, no, I think that, that, that that's been around for you know, eons because of sailing. That's yeah. a sailing. Oh, device. oh yeah, that's right. Digital cameras were invented by the military. Really? It was used for spy satellites. Made by the Air Force, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. spy satellites. They had no way of uh, getting film out of them so they could develop them. <laughs> wow, I never knew that. Uh uh-uh. uh. Gosh. They had to have a way to digitally get an image and then send it back down to Earth. Gosh. I had no idea that was the where they came from. No, uh uh-uh. uh. I think you're trying to get dial up to a satellite. <coughs> I mean that must take it forever. <laughs> <laughs> uh let's see what else do I have here. Um freeze drying is is a, a military technology. Sure. The tech- sure. And again you gotta you gotta feed your, your men, so yeah. Uh, drones, of course, that makes sense. Drones are a military invention. Uh-huh. Ambulances are a military invention. Oh, they are. The first, oh, I didn't know that. The first ambulances appeared on the battlefield in 1487. They, oh. they were used by the Spanish army to pick up wounded soldiers from war zones. Mm-hmm. Gosh. Oh, what did they use? Like just human power? Or horses. Mules. Or mules. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Uh, oh, yeah, because if a person was sick, the doctor would come to you because that was before hospitals, right? I think so, yeah. Way back <laughs> when. Uh, and penicillin is the last one I have. Penicillin invented uh, during World War One by Alexander Fleming. Gosh. I, I didn't think it was for the military, though. I didn't know that. He, by the military. Well, he served as a captain in the Royal Army Medical Corps, during which time he witnessed many deaths of soldiers from sepsis resulting from infected wounds. The ant- antiseptics yeah. of the time were not effective and actually did more harm than good. In later years, Fleming discovered a type of mold that was releasing a substance that was inhibiting bacterial growth. That substance was later named penicillin and was mass-produced in the years that followed treating successfully injured soldiers during World War II. You wow. know, if if all the people that you if, uh, of all of the inventions that you named, if all the people that did the inventing, if they weren't so observant, they wouldn't have invented it or noticed it or anything. They would have just gone on their way. You yeah. know, the guy with the candy bar. You know, this guy with penicillin. So you you really got to give credit to the human, you know, uh, way of caring for things and and the human curiosity. You know, I don't need to be anywhere near a microwave. And a candy bar will melt in my pocket. Oh. <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> I, don't know. I, I would just think, well, that's just my body heat doing yeah. that, right? Uh, uh, I think this probably happened instantaneously. Yeah. So, and he was, and he, I'm sure he was sterile after that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he could go out and have a good time. Honey, I don't know what's going on. We're trying to have kids. I'm doing my best. <laughs> Maybe he's yeah. these damn melted chocolate bars in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, where are you going today? Anywhere? You're just staying home. I don't mean home, but I mean, uh, Gainesville. I'm yeah. on my way to Gainesville. That's what I mean by home. Yeah, I don't mean home, yeah. home, mm. home territory, home turf. All right, so the, we have a bet but, now. If if these guys in this little soccer team uh, play their first game and it uh-huh. does not exceed the number of people that watches the Super Bowl, uh-huh. then I owe Galen a dinner. Okay. There you, there you go. go. Yeah, there you go. Excellent. Galen, uh, uh, how's the, uh, where's the blood mobile today? Hey, today we're uh, at a couple of locations. We're at Wedgwood Road, Walmart, in the villages, and then we're also at Mojo's on 40. Uh, we're going to be there tonight, 4 to 8. So uh, come by, check us out. That's the one out there on East 40. Oh, yeah. So come by and see us. All yeah, right. right past the Appleton. All right, be uh, careful, Galen. Right next to Lowe's. Thank you for yep, what yep. you do. Everybody else, please donate blood. And thank you, Palm Garden. Thank you, Penn Flooring. Thank you, Galen. All right. Bye, y'all. We'll be right back.
Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 963 FM, The Source. Fox News Radio, I'm Chris Foster. President Trump announces who he wants to replace Supreme Court Justice Anthony Kennedy. It is my honor and privilege to announce that I will nominate Judge Brett Kavanaugh to the United States Supreme Court. He's 53 years old, the federal judge on the D.C. Court of Appeals. Senate Democrats have already come out against confirmation. And the Senate needs to hear from you. Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren with protesters outside the Supreme Court. Families separated at the border with kids under five years old are supposed to have been reunited by today, per a federal judge's order. Most children will actually be reunited at ICE facilities today, but in some cases, parents were released and their whereabouts unknown. Others have been deported. Health and Human Services was doing DNA tests to ensure kids matched up with the adults. The deadline to reunite kids older than five is in two weeks. Fox's Jessica Rosenthal. Fox News. We report. You decide. Friends, are you taking Viagra for ED? Well, you could be paying too much. Now you can take Sildenafil, the active ingredient in Viagra, for just $2 per tablet. $2 for a 20-milligram tablet, saving $40 per dose. Marley Drug is a North Carolina pharmacy delivering Sildenafil to your doorstep. Go to MarleyGenerics.com. That's M-A-R-L-E-Y MarleyGenerics.com. Or call 1-800-452-1760. That's 1-800-452-1760. Dad, what are you doing? Cramming for college. I'm the one going to college. Yeah, but we need to figure out how we're going to pay for it all. Discover Student Loans. Discover does student loans? Yeah. They're one of the top student loan lenders in the country. It takes 15 minutes or less to apply, and there are no fees for the life of the loan. Best of all, I can earn cash rewards if I get good grades. Really? Yeah. We still have time to apply and get a great rate. So I can just chill. College kids still say that, right? No one says that, Dad. Really? Yeah. Visit discoverstudentloans.com to apply today. Limitations apply. Yeah, counsel. There are only a few things in life that you can be certain will always be around. Death, taxes, the pursuit of happiness, and computers. As they continue to advance at an epic pace, the one absolute certainty about them is that they'll break. It's not an if, it's a when. And when it happens, bring it to the only company in Ocala that's certified in Apple and Microsoft, Ocala Mac and PC Repair. They even offer on-site computer repair service, so they come to you. And if you do drop it off, you can check your repair status online. Ocala Mac and PC Repair is a family-owned and operated company that can do everything from mobile repair to wireless networks, fixing viruses, data recovery, even building and installing new systems. Visit online at ocalamacpc.com. In person, 1713 East Silver Springs Boulevard. Or give them a call, 352-566-8324. That's 352-566-8324. Ocala Mac and PC Repair. In the good old summertime, it takes you back, doesn't it? Makes you think and remember? What did you do in the summertime when you were a kid? At Palm Garden of Ocala, we see folks who are young at heart, but their bodies are giving them a tough time. Our goal for every guest we serve is to bring them to their highest level of independence. Come visit us soon. We're located on the corner of Southwest 27th Avenue and 30. 4th Street. And when you're in the hospital, ask for Palm Garden by name. Need help getting something awkward, large, or fragile, expertly packed, or custom created and shipped? Call on the professionals at PacMail. PacMail can ship anything, anywhere, and will find the perfect solution to even the most difficult shipping problems. From that big screen TV to an antique china cabinet, no item is too large or too delicate for the professionals at PacMail. Go online to WeShipOcala.com. That's WeShipOcala.com. PacMail ships anything, anywhere. Hi, Matt Wilkerson here, your Verizon representative with news that will hum your car, make it smart and safe. How? With the new...